guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Hope you guys are doing well out there. I was just kind of finishing recording a video for my other channel too, and I kind of went on a long kind of monologue. I'll keep it much shorter here on this channel, but uh, just kind of sending positive vibes your way. It's weird as a, a content creator, as a YouTuber, whatever. You have like these niche audiences. You put these videos out covering a, a mobile game or whatever on a daily basis, and it's, it's really... <laughs> It's a struggle because you want to use your platform for good, actually to make a positive change in anybody's lives who happen to be watching and stumbling across these videos on the internet. But at the same time, you want to stick with what people actually clicked on the video to watch. So I guess that I'll kind of get to the point again. I'm starting to get rambly. I'll get to the point again and just like say that, you know, for those of you who are going through difficult times right now, and I know there's a lot of people right now going through difficult times, uh, just trying to send a, a message of positivity and a message of hope and a message of kind of love, compassion to you guys, because I don't know who needs to hear this. Maybe only one person watching uh, right now. Who knows? Maybe maybe no people watching right now. But at the end of the day, you know, what we, who we are is a story that we tell ourselves, right? So just kind of encourage you guys to, if you're telling yourself negative things about anything, I'm late. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I can't work out because of this, or I'm not happy. I'm just not a happy person. Uh, just realize, take a second to recognize that you are in control of the story that you weave of your narrative of your life. Uh, and, you know, you can change that too. So and what better transition into the best arena nukers and raid shadow legends, boys and girls. Uh, but in all sincerity, uh, hope you guys are, are, are doing well, you know. Uh, in terms of today's video, right, I wanted to talk about arena nukers, right? And I've done a couple, like, top uh, d 10 uh, epic nukers. Legendaries have, like, so many good nukers, so it's tough to even choose five. So I, th I thought in terms of the format of today's video, we do this, right? I want to cover two ignore defense nukers, even if they're single target, it doesn't have to be an AoE nuker, uh, from each faction, uh, faction, so rare, epic, and legendary, to just ignore defense, because ignore defense is so strong in this game. I mean, think about it, right? Savage gear, Helm Smasher Mastery, and ignore defense on a skill. I mean, a lot of the champions are only built to like, you know, max 50k HP, and these champions who ignore defense, they're oftentimes doing way over 50k HP, and if there's no defense factored in there, if we're ignoring defense, all they have to do is, and in some, some champions have like 30k HP. Easy one shots, boom. So I think ignore defense is an insane ability to have in any champion's kit. You should keep an eye out for it. So I want to give a couple nods in each rarity to ignore defense champions. Now on top of that, I also want to talk about just a, a kind of quintessential AoE nuker in each rarity. Just an AoE beast in terms of great multipliers, great staple for your arena team AoE. And then I want to cover a fourth champion of every rarity that brings something else to the table. Maybe a little crowd control. Maybe, uh, you know, putting uh, skills on cooldown. Stuff like that, okay? And then and also that does damage, right? An AoE nuker on top of that and then last but not least kind of be kind of kind of going to be a flex spot for champions that i just like you know maybe it's repetitive maybe it's another aoe nuker uh but just kind of champions that i like in each rarity so let's go ahead and start with the big guns let's start with the legendary champions on today's list and i'm going to start with actually just the uh you know, the best AoE nuker in the game right now, right? The most obvious choice in today's video is going to be Trunda. One thing I will mention on Trunda, if you're using her as an arena AoE nuker, you really want her hitting twice on this Forge Rhythm. Uh, basically, long story short, it's an insanely hard-hitting ability, and it can hit twice if you don't place a stun, an HP burn, okay? So you want to build her if it's only for arena, and this is really, you know, situational, because of course you want the HP burn and or the stun in dungeons, but if you're just building her as an arena nuker, an arena beast she can still be serviceable in dungeons too you want to build her with no accuracy you don't want her to be landing the stun you want her to be hitting twice for you know 60 70 80k per hit uh once we really scale to god uh, tier gear in trunda and then on her a2 actually cloak of ages has a higher multiplier than her a3 believe it or not one of the highest in the game i think it's a six multiplier on this however it only attacks, it only does 60% of the damage to all the other targets other than the one that you're selecting. So it is mitigated by that. You're going to be opening up with, of course, Forge Rhythm, her her main big ability. And then the A1 attacks one enemy two times, has a chance of landing the stun. Usually, all it takes is an A3 from Trunda, and it's game over. GG's, right? A very, very powerful champion in the game. Need I say more? In terms of a flex champion that I wanted to mention here, we're in the same category already. I wanted to give a shout out to Mountain King. 
So Mountain King isn't incredibly meta because double hitters uh, or strong AoE champions or at least a strong single target hitter that is void, not forced because you have to worry about affinity matchups. It's it's not, you don't see a ton of Mountain Kings. You see a, a lot in Platinum, but you just don't see a ton as much as you used to maybe eight months ago or so inside the game where Mountain King was the god of, of single target damage. Uh, however, because his damage is based off HP, HP and attack, but with a, an emphasis on HP, the reason he's such a great Arena Nuka right now, and I, the reason I prefer him over Krutraxa, right, who's another champion that's not on this list but's a god of a single target uh, hitter, is because you can put him in a shield set. And that allows your team, you build him with a ton of HP. He has the highest base HP in the game at 31,000. You build him with a ton of HP. You put him in a shield set. And then your, your team can always go second. There's no blender team out there who's going to take your team down when you have a Mountain King at 100k HP in a shield set. Okay, uh, So adding that extra utility is why I want to give a nod to Mountain King as one of my flex spots on my top five legendaries. Now, I was going to... It's almost a tie here. It's almost a tie. Actually, I don't want to talk about that one yet. It's almost a tie here, guys, between... And our ties are kind of cheap, right? Between Foley, because against anybody who's going to be stunned, freezing, sleep, or provoking you, he will immediately remove it, and then you just go into the sealed fate, and uh, it's a block revival. So Foley's incredible, so I guess we're just going to... We're going to be cheap. This will be the only tie of the video, and then give a tie to Ray too. So Foley and Ray are incredible arena nukers. Ray has an AOE on every single attack. She also has extra damage on her A2. She also has a freeze uh, at 70% chance on her A3 banish. Uh, just a great nuker Ray is with, with really, really solid multipliers as well. Ray, again, is not super meta. Not as You don't see her as often in Platinum as you do Foley, for example. That does not mean she's not an incredible nuker. She really, really is a, a fabulous option for AoE. Now, I want to go to Undead Horde now and talk about my ignored defense legendaries that I want to give a, uh, a big shout out to. So I don't have uh, either of these legendaries. I wish I did. They're both beasts. And again, especially legendary category, guys, there's a ton of champions I left off the list. I can't be here for, uh, especially with that long preamble, that rah-rah, uh, you know, kumbaya intro in today's video. It could be a 45-minute video, an hour-long video if I went any deeper than this. So suffice it to say, even ignore defense. There's errols out there. There's a lot of great champions, but these are just some that I notice uh, being played a lot more inside the arena lately, Blood Gorge being one of them. So Decreased defense on the A1, on the A2, it's an AoE. Put one of each target skills on cooldown, on a three-turn cooldown. Raging Beast is an insane ability for the arena. And check out this one. It's Decapitate. Decapitate who attacks one enemy with this scythe of his. Uh, will ignore 100% of defense and block revival on a four turn. Decapitate is an insane ability. It hits incredibly hard and he's just a great champion for the arena. Very low base speed, but boy, is he a beast. I wish I had Blood Gorged for the uh, arena specifically. Kandrafon is another champion that I could obviously put on this list. And I will be building out Saito uh, as well and doing a guide on him pretty soon. The newest legendary champion. Actually, Lydia came out today. I'll have her in two days. I'll do a guide, I think, on her. Uh, certainly not a, a, a nuker though. The last guy I want to give a, a, a nod to is a high elf, and I got to give a shout out to my man, uh, Royal Huntsman, uh, or Manable, I should say, uh, because he did a video on double Royal Huntsman. Dude, it was insane, man. Puts out a ton of damage, this dude, and uh, ignore defense champion, right? So he can one-shot basically anybody. If they're in a shield set, who cares? If they're in a, you know, have super high defense, who cares? Doesn't matter. Has a decreased defense on an AoE on an A2. But here it is, dead aim. Attack one enemy is very simple. Attack one enemy will ignore defense by 100%. There it is on a five turn cooldown. Does a ton of damage. And there it is. That's all I have to say about that in the words of Forrest Gump. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the epic champions here, guys. And I want to start with a, a guy who helped me out recently in Faction Wars, and it is Faceless. Faceless is a very hard-hitting ignore defense champion as well, and it's all about his Ice Bolt, his A3 on a three-turn cooldown. Attacks one enemy, will ignore shield, will ignore block damage, and will ignore 100% defense on a three-turn. 
Dude, I will say this is not hit anywhere near as hard as some of the legendary ignore defenses in terms of multipliers, but it still hits very, very hard, okay? And uh, it can pretty much one-shot, again, anybody, even if they have that shield, even if they have that block damage. So Faceless, definitely a champion and worth looking into. And again, like I said, I do have this dude, and he helped me out a ton. Uh, really love that champion. And uh, same category. Actually, no, uh, she's a dwarf, Ash. She's not a, uh, not a Knight Revenant. Uh, it's Gal Longbraids is my favorite. There's a lot of ignore uh, defense champions in the epic category as well. But I love Gala as well. She helped me out in Dwarf 21. Uh, Gala Longbraids is really unique. She has a lot of ignoring targets defense. <clears throat> Excuse me. And she also has uh, some just a really cool kit. On the, let's talk about the A1 first, actually. On the A1, she places a shield buff on herself. Uh, equal to 20% of the damage it inflicted, which is really cool. And then the A2, think about the synergy of each of these abilities as we go into the next ability in her kit. On the A2, Fearless Aggression attacks one enemy, ignores 50% of the target's defense when attacking under a shield buff. Heals this champion by 50% of the damage inflicted, places a shield buff on this champion, equal to any surplus heal for three turns. Okay, awesome. And then check out Sheer Swagger, her A3. Attacks one enemy three times. Each hit ignores 25% of the target's defense. Grants an extra turn if this champion has full HP after using this skill. So how you want to, you know, run a team with her is you run a shield champion anyway on the team. So, you know, it doesn't have to be Mountain King, can be whoever, right? A shield champion with a shield artifact set on. You go into this as your first move. Full HP. She gets an extra turn. You kill one enemy, ignoring 25% of defense. Extra turn. You move into this. Because she has that shield buff on already, you're going to ignore 50% of the target's defense and kill another enemy before anybody else even goes. Really, really powerful champion. I'm a big fan of Gala Longbridge. She has very disgustingly low uh, defense, though. It's 661, so just keep that in mind. She ignores defense. She also ignores her own defense. She also ignores her own. Uh, next, we're going to go back to Night Revenant. Take a look at... Uh, a champion. I just did a tandem guide on Sinesha and her sister, Skullcrown. So Skullcrown is definitely on this list as the probably the most well-known AoE uh, nuker in the epic category. Yeah, she's a beast. She has the speed as well to help you out in the arena. Uh, she has on the A1. We, we had her in a shield set, and it's actually great for added utility, especially in dungeons. But, you know, you can't go wrong, I guess, with a shield set. Uh, excuse me, a stun set, not shield. A stun set in the arena, too, because attacks all enemies, place an extra hit if the target has more than 50% HP pretty cool right so it's uh you know two hits 18 percent chance each of the stun but really you want her in savage right and that goes with all these nukers you want them in savage set if you can get it cruel artifacts if you can get it just stack up their crit damage on these champions i guess kind of a tip for you guys on building these champions out is sure focus on attack but crit damage scales much better than attack and much higher than attack so if you can get a champion 200 plus uh, crit damage 300 plus as you move into the end game crit damage you're gonna see way better dividends that's why it's imperative that you have eventually you move these champions from crit rate on their gauntlets to crit damage on their gauntlets and then for the arena purposes you pretty much want to be putting them in uh attack percentage on their chest and if you can get them on a speed team uh with speed boosters like a seeker for example like a, a lissandra for example an arbiter there's a bunch of them out there if you can get the speeds to be appropriate you can then, in the late game or in the mid game, transition their speed boots off and put attack percentage boots off too, as long as your enemies are not cutting you in line. I'll talk about that more in a future video. But an AoE on the A1 and a very heavy hitting AoE on the A2 with the weaken as well in Corrupting Touch on a three turn cooldown. That is uh, Skull Crown. Let's go over to Oryx for a second. Talk about our girl. Zargala. So Zargala has really good multipliers, not as high as, you know, some of the legendary nukers that we talked about, but she also has a cool kit where she attacks all enemies three times in crack armor. After the first hit, she has a chance at placing the strong version of decreased defense on all enemies for two turns. That's actually a 75% chance, so very consistent. And then on the Devastate, on a two-turn cooldown, it attacks one enemy and instantly activates the crack armor ability if 
you kill that enemy. So again, put her in Savage for the arena and uh, build her with some accuracy. You get defense down, a debuffer. You also get the three hitter on the A3 and then hopefully you can trigger it again after you kill somebody the second go round. That's Zargala. And then my favorite champion, guys, who is kind of that flex CC spot, I guess you would say, is actually a... Uh, did it not Dark Elf? Where the heck? What the heck? Why am I drawing a blank? Oh, Demon, 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 Demon. Are we in Demon? No. Demon Spawn. It is Umbral Enchantress. You guys know we've been watching the channel for a while that she was one of the first champions that I really, uh, I don't know. I, I guess she's popular. The word's out on this champion now, but one of the first champions I was like, dude, why is she not considered like a beast, an arena beast? And she is because this Undying Evil attacks all enemies. Her damage is based off defense, which is, you know, unique for this list, by the way. Attacks all enemies. This hits hard and so does uh, her A2. So hard hitting defensive based ability with tons of extra value provided. Attacks all enemies, has a provoke, 100% chance of landing a provoke. Plays in for two turn provoke, very, very rare to see that. Uh, has unkillable buff on this champion for two turns. Plays a block cooldown skills debuff for five turns on her, so she's basically incapacitated. And that is Umbral Enchantress. Also on the A2, you don't really use it a lot because you usually open with the provokes, and then you have five turns where you can't use anything else, right? So. But it's still really good to have a 100% block buffs debuff for three turns on a hard-hitting AoE on a three-turn cooldown. And then, because she's going to be taking so much damage, her damage actually increases as her current HP decreases. Really cool to kind of have that in her kit as well. So that's my girl, Umbral Enchantress. I'm a big fan of that champion. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the rares here, guys. And again... This is not a definitive only, these are the only good nuking champions in the game. They're just my favorites in these categories that we already talked about. So Bellower is really cool because Bellower is, you know, he, he tails off in the mid game in the arena. You don't see him much in gold at all. Uh, you certainly don't see him in platinum. You don't really see any rare champions in, in platinum. Uh, but might you, you only see a couple epics actually in platinum uh, nowadays uh but mighty bellow has a decreased speed that's cool on the a1 he has block cooldown skills on a 30 percent chance it's, it's not a high enough chance of landing it for it to be super effective in the arena but it's still nice to have and bellow with three aoe attacks especially just as a an aoe nuker farmer you just build him out and he's doing aoe's all the time right endless aoe attacks uh from uh from bellower so for that reason and he's an effective kind of speed farming composition nuker to have on your team alongside a debuffer. And again, you can build this champion to be a nuker. A lot of people do. I tend to have him as be more of a support champion, but a lot of people run Bellower in, you know, savage gear or whatever, just attack gear, you know, and just make him kind of their 100% crit rate and as much crit damage as they can. He actually puts out some decent damage as well. A lot of you guys watching probably do that same thing. The next one is a champion that's not seen as a nuker per se but believe it or not we've talked about this here on the channel before she actually has and some people i remember way back in the day when i said this they're like nah that's not that's not true warman does not have one of the highest multipliers in the in, in, in out of rares in the game and then we had other people smarter than me uh by the way uh double check that and it's like yeah she actually does and it's really on her uh her crumbling blast it's a hard-hitting ability. War Maiden can stand up there with any of the starting champions except for Kale in terms of her damage output, and she's farmable. And she does a lot of damage with the consistent three-turn decreased defense at 100% clip of landing. Really, really strong. And she's a decent nuker. Again, we're, I would say... Pretty much all the champ rare champions except for one is really going to taper out. I'm not going to say it on every single champion, but as you get to, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and be like, yeah, we see war maidens all the time in platinum or gold four or whatever. And you guys probably already know that, but you can get by with these champions. That's why I want to cover rares, even in a nuking video like this, because uh, it's important because not everybody is in the mid game. You know, some people are just starting out and just watching this video for the, you know, first, first thing they have uh, for arena kind of team efficiency and nukers. By the way, another kind of side note here, it's important to build your nuker pretty much every team except for the end game with a decreased defense champion too. So War Maiden, you kind of get two birds, one stone, right? And then on her A2, another pretty hard hitting ability for a rare, uh, if I can click on it here. There we go. Opportunity Strike has an increased attack buff on this champion and plays an extra hit if the attack is critical. So it's a two hitter on her A2. That is War Maiden. Now let's go ahead and talk about 
uh, a girl who we actually just talked about on yesterday's video, and that is one of the starters, Aethel. So Aethel in the Divine Blades ability attacks all enemies, has a 15% chance of an extra chance of inflicting a critical hit, is nice. It's easier to get her from a crit rate gauntlets to crit damage gauntlets, and Divine Blades hits pretty hard. The other cool thing doesn't really affect Arena that much, but a lot of people start out as Aethel or Kale to be their Arena Nuker, and again, that really helps out, having that extra 15% chance of landing a critical hit. Remember, again guys, especially on these rares, you're just starting out, you're using them, Crit rate is very important. Do not put an attack percentage on these champions' gauntlets. You want crit rate on those gauntlets or crit damage if you can get the crit rate somewhere else. Uh, likely not if you're just starting out. But she procs an extra turn on her A3, which basically just decreases the cooldown of her A2. Any champion, keep an eye out for champions that have gains an extra turn at the end of their skill. There's some real hidden value in that in the, in the sense that boom, extra turn, boom, one less turn on the cooldown on Divine Blades. And Aethel does have really good multipliers as well, again, for a rare champion. The next one is actually going to be a Dark Elf champion, and it's going to be another starter, Kale. So Kale, again, is a, a, a suitable nuker for the arena for the early into the mid game of Raid Shadow Legends. Attacks all enemies with his Acid Rain, which hits pretty hard. Has, an again, an extra 15% chance of inflicting a critical hit, just like Aethel's Divine Blades ability. And then fills the term of this champion by 25% for each enemy kill. So you guys do the math, you kill all the enemies, you got a turn meter, then you got nothing to do because you already won the battle. But hey, if you kill two, 50% turn meter is not bad at all. That is Kale. And last but not least, my favorite, the only one, in my opinion, who really scales, or the one who scales the best. Again, not an end game champ, but a, a fun champion. And it's kind of a newer rare, uh, relatively speaking, compared to the other ones. And it's Soulbound Bowyer. Soulbound Bowyer is so unique because of the A2. Infused Arrow, on a three turn cooldown, has an additional 25% chance of landing a critical hit instead of the 15 on Kale and Aethel. So again, build her crit rate up to around 75% chance. This is still going to have a 100% chance of being critical, provided the, uh, you know, the affinity matchup is correct. We'll ignore 75% of the target's defense. I want to say there's only 13 champions in the game, legendaries and epics included, that ignore 75% or more of the target's defense from a skill. You put her in Savage Gear, you're ignoring 100% of target's defense with the Infused Arrow ability. She's the only rare that I know of that has any ability anywhere close to that. And then Soulbound Shot is really cool too. Has a 25% chance of inflicting a critical hit again, and then has a 75% chance, can be booked up to 100, of fully depleting the target's turn meter. Soulbound Bowyer has a really sick kit. Uh, the downside is her base stats are just not that high, right? So, excuse me, her attack is uh, 1255, defense 870 and HP 13.5k so you know again diminished returns as you scale into this game but definitely a champion worth investing in for an ignore defense champion in the rare category so there you go guys those are my picks for 15 nukers I guess 16 with the tie there uh that you guys should keep an eye out for uh who who am I forgetting obviously a lot of champions as I mentioned in this video but who's your favorite who I didn't mention let me know in the comments below guys thank you so much for watching and as always take care guys.